Well, now I've got some white and some blue. As you can see, I've got a basic sketch on the canvas and I've also toned the canvas. This just happened to be kind of leftover paints. So I threw it on there. And now we're going to, now we're going to paint in a very, very pale blue sky. Not much in the way of, of blue, actually. Now I've got my, my mister model. Keep the paint wet. In fact, you can mist the canvas just here at the beginning. It kind of helps. Also, we should take a look at the paintings that you guys did of our last one. It's always fun to see those. So if you're doing, you know, if you're doing these paintings along with me, you definitely should share them using the hashtag on the screen. And then I'll get them in my next video if I get them in time. Well, now I'm going to grab some of this kind of just a brown color, maybe a little yellow ochre in there. So it's not totally, totally gray and you know, it's got a little warmth in it. Now, let's go ahead and underpaint this path. It's not too early to begin to do that. That works. I actually like some of that blue showing through. That's not going to hurt anything. And as you go back, perhaps you want it to get a, a little more foggy, a little more misty. So to do that, we kind of get our, we get our purple action going. There it is. Ooh, it's about the same color as the palette. There, and then we'll see how we'll make those two colors sort of meet together. Now we need to be a little bit careful because things are still wet, but if I'm, yeah, it's, it's still wet, but if I'm very careful, I can just tap on without lifting through the paint and going very soft, very delicate. I'm not overworking it or going over too many areas. We're painting with acrylics. So you could do this painting just as well with oils. Uh, I would like some sun rays kind of coming through the trees, probably from this left side, moving to the right side. And it may be kind of hard to do that in oil. You could always let it dry and then go back and do it. That's no big deal. Nobody's standing behind you saying you can't do that. You can. If you need to let your oil painting dry, let it dry. We're painting acrylics today because I didn't, didn't really want to have to mess with a wet canvas. We're trying to pull sun rays and, and mist and that sort of thing through the trees. Now we're going to build up our forest in layers of trees. See this? It's most important that, that trees overlap. I've got just a really watery mix of just gray here. Keep your paints misted. Oops. <laughs> glad this is a glad I smudged that there at the beginning and not the end. Let's see, we'll just pull up some of these trees. We won't make a big thing about it. We'll just get some in and then maybe just a couple more layers, uh, slightly darker, each one slightly darker than the next, just to bring some of the background trees a little bit more forward. It's not going to be anything too big of a deal right now. It's just kind of the basic idea. A lot of these will not really show up at all, so you don't have to worry too much about them. Just get them in. Get them in quick and loose like that. Pretty good. Well, now I'm going to place in just a little background hill, mountain thing. Not mountain. Come on now. <laughs> it's barely a hill. It's like a little berm of dirt. A little grass growing up on it. I don't want much. I do not want much. There we go. Some dark. Might as well kind of get it all in now. You don't have to do it perfect. That's the nice part. Doesn't have to be perfect. Doesn't even have to be anywhere close to perfect. Hey, this is water-based acrylic. I don't mind touching it and smudging it. It just rinses off your hands. It's not a big deal. While we're here, why not just start underpainting? That's all that is, just a quick wash, a glaze, an underpainting. Nothing fancy at all. Oh, this is not fancy. Now, this may be just a little repetitive, but we're going to paint in some more trees. But this time, see, we're going to leave a little, leave a little, uh, depth in the painting or, or achieve a little depth. I, I guess would be a much better way to say that. They certainly don't need to be too big. In fact, I would put, I'd put a decent amount of water with them. That way they're, you know, not quite as dark. That looks good because when you thin paint down so much, there, there's a point where it'll actually dry out lighter because there's just so much water in it. That's about where we're at here with this. Now I'm going to fill in that last little section that needs to be filled in. I'm going to go with slightly more of a, a green because we are moving forward in the foreground and this having this little more green, having just a little more color even in it is going to help make it look closer. That looks good. Now rocks, it's not too early to begin placing in these rocks. They have a lot of green in them actually, and that helps kind of keep with the painting. That will just look like super mossy rocks, a lot of stuff growing on them. And I think that will be interesting. And the rocks go right there. Okay. That's not bad. 
a little dark down in this corner as well. Just get a little water and just spread that dark kind of around. Now we're finally gonna do something other than trees. What a bonus. Gonna take some of our yellow there. That's our yellow ochre, a little touch of our umber, a little water there. Good. Okay. So anyway, you can mess around with that color more, but I want to create back here the beginning stages of a little, little highlight on this road. You know, it may take several attempts, several layers to get this just the way you want it. In fact, I'm planning on doing some really pretty uh, light spots on the road, but we'll do that more toward the end. This painting is not super interesting, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the sunlight and the mist to make it more interesting. That's, that's kind of how this painting is gonna work today. So we gotta get through these kind of basic steps. I know this isn't super exciting, but in just a few minutes, it'll all come together and I think you'll enjoy kind of seeing that work. Now I'm going to mix up another green color. I've got my number four bristle brush. This is my natural bristle brush going this time. Got to mush in, get some of that good brush texture going. Got to make that texture happen. All right, now right up in here, we're going to begin to paint in little spots of highlight. And again, this is just like the rest of this. It may start out a little weird, a little rough, not so great. It will eventually develop into something that's good. We'll just continue working on this, highlighting just the background. I'm just worried about this little section here, maybe a little here. Not, not too worried, maybe a little here. Soft edges, that's what's important. Soft edges, soft edges everywhere. Well, now I'm going to stipple on using the flat brush again. Just some some leaves here. Oh, look at that. This is the, the big flat blender brush. One we use for backgrounds, but it works really good for leaves and texture like this. Each time when you're doing stuff like this, and it, it could be oils, whatever, you know, you can tap a two inch brush or whatever you're gonna do. Always make sure that when you load it, you're, you're doing something different as it comes out of the pile of paint. That is where you get your leaves, right there. And that way these leaves look different from those leaves. See that? These kind of have some long bits to them. These are more round. And, and what that does is it creates difference in there. Now we've got a little difference happening. That's good. And I like these just about, that's about the right thickness for these leaves. Yeah. Anywhere that's kind of needs to be covered, go ahead and cover it. So now this is totally dry. I'm going to go ahead and place on some some wash this is right here see how watery it is you see how it's separating on my palette that tells you how watery it is and if it's not that watery this will not work <laughs> this will just this will be exactly what you're left with but this right here what you're seeing is not what i'm going to be left with what you're seeing is, is something that's going to be com almost completely gone by the time it dries it's just one of the bonuses of acrylic. You can do these washes, these glazes. I know it looks intense, but it won't dry that way. You do want it to be wet enough that it gets down into the grain of the canvas. Oh, yes. Anybody worried? <laughs> ah, this is fun. There. Let that dry. We may want to do another coat. We'll just have to wait and see. Well, now I'm going to block in a larger tree with basically black. It's not black. I've got brown, mostly brown in it, really just a little black, but it certainly looks like black up here, doesn't it? Add a little foundation medium or water just to thin it down. Let it glide. You may have to do a couple of coats to make it dark enough. Depends on how thin you make it. There we go. And let's see here. So you can kind of go any, any which way you want with this tree. Maybe something like that. Maybe it kind of kicks out a little just so it's not straight. I, I think you don't want to do it just a perfectly straight tree it won't look as good of course what's a tree without a big limb or two i'll tell you what it is it's incomplete <laughs> let's add these big limbs there we go now i'm going to kind of imagine my sun rays kind of coming through here and illuminating this road we'll do the road first then we'll do the rest but i've got this lighter kind of white yellow color maybe a little cad yellow in there will be good And we'll just work it, trying to get some of these highlight spots going. You know, it doesn't need to be perfect. 
That's good. I would imagine, you know, that light ray coming through here, maybe hitting down right here. There. Yes. See how that light's coming through uh, right back here. I would imagine to see a little light. A little bit right there. Not, not too sharp, though. Anyway, that gives you an idea. And how we work the road in. Now let's mix up very quickly here. Just a kind of a tree color something. This is just a little flat blender brush. In fact, I need to get it wet. I cleaned it out so it wouldn't uh, dry. Sometimes you got to stop and clean your brushes because if you go have lunch or something, your, uh, your paint will dry in your brush. <laughs> but anyway, let's go ahead and just stamp on just like we did before. Nothing different. I want to stamp on a few leaves here on this side as well a little bit not too much you know if you do too much you kind of fill that background in a little more than you want to and you end up you know it's kind of a waste of time to paint the background in as much as we did if you're just going to cover it just a few little leaves here not too many there we go now i've got a really bright yellow color and i'm just going to sprinkle in not too much but just a bit in through here where I would expect this to catch a little extra light. This is my number four bristle brush, the natural bristle brush. It does a good job of things like this. Kind of create some little shapes. Give a quick smudge just so it's not totally perfect. Yeah, there we go. That'll be nice right there. That would be really nice. And tell you what we can do as well. It would be worthwhile, I think. Go ahead and this is my rock ledge here, but let's go ahead and start to get in some details here. Yeah, that's pretty good. You're pretty good. I'm going slow only because I'm not too sure how much of this I do or don't want, you know. It may be right down through there. That's going to be there, my rocks. That's where it's really catching some light. It's elevated up a bit. Now I'm going to highlight these trees, but I'm going to do it fairly sparing. I don't need a whole lot of highlight today. It's just not necessary. Just a, just a bit of a highlight, enough to kind of show, hey, there's something going on. And we'll leave it at that. That's probably enough for that one. This one may be a little, a little different color, a little yellow ochre. Yeah, splashy yellow ochre is not going to hurt that one either. Good. Less is more, for sure. A little bit on this big one, but really also more of a silver lining on this one. I think I'd like to keep this one fairly dark. Hey, that works. That's good enough for that one. Like I said, don't want to overdo it. Okay, now what do you think? Maybe just a little bit of a purple or something along those lines. It looks like I need more white. Something along the lines of kind of a purpley color right along the back side. That will help create interest. I'm using the number four bristle brush. It's a good choice for this sort of thing. Now I've got my mister bottle and I'm gonna put a lot of water in one spot. That thins it down quite a bit to where I can use my liner brush. That saves me from having to do 300 you know, dips into the water to try to get just enough water. It takes, you know, when you're using linseed oil, with your, when you're oil painting, it doesn't take all that much to thin it down. But when you're using water, it seems like it takes a ton and it's always evaporating, so. There you go. This is the very same liner brush, in case, in case you were wondering, it is the very same liner brush that I use for oils. I just have a different color handle on it so that I won't get it confused with my oil brush. Because you don't want to mix your different kinds of brushes, really. But there you go. Look at that. But see, it doesn't hurt to get these little, little limbs and whatnot going. That's very interesting. See, this is all, it's all good. It's just interesting. Nice. And a few up here, just quick and easy and random. And then while we're while we're working here, we might as well might as well get us some just some some light ones down here. Just some some super subtle light little grasses and whatnot. Green 
and also green and also some brown ones. Not too many, super dark though, see that? They say light, but they're really pretty dark. Now when you're pretty sure this is all dry, it really does need to be dry. I'm gonna take, this is my flat blender brush, and as you see, I've got this very watery, very watery blue and white mix going on there. And this is kind of where it gets exciting. Let's get up here, right here, right here. And just as you saw way back there, you know, in the background, I'm going to float mist over my painting. Does it take a little courage? Maybe. <laughs> I was going to say no, but maybe it does. I don't know. I don't know. Hey, if this is really, really good and dry, you should be able to mist it very lightly, not heavy, very light. There we go. That will help with the floating of the mist, because don't you know that mist has to float? Now we've got little beams of, of sunlight coming through, just like this. Oh, yes, we do. I see them. See them? It's exciting. Mist all over this, all over this area. More paint, more mist. There it is. There it is. There it is. Now, do not mist this unless you're going to work that mist in because it'll actually beat up and cause problems. See, and work all that water in. Then you can float your paint over all this. It's okay to have some dry spots and some spots where, okay, so if your sun's over here, you know, the light's kind of coming through there, then you want to think about it like a clock, right? Everything like radiates out from the center. That's sort of like a, like a hand of a clock, I guess. Something like that. Nice, look at that. Look at that. Go ahead and bring those shafts of light all the way through. Just like so. Good, I actually want this a little bit more, a little bit more heavy, I think, or even in this area. Now maybe just a, yeah, a little bit right in here. <laughs> this is fun. This is fun to work kind of back and forth. Grab your, uh, you can grab anything, just a fan brush, anything, just to add some extra softness if you need to. That looks good. Let's let that dry and see what we have. We're not really going to know until it does dry. So now I'm going to add one more layer of sun rays and I'm not going to crazy it, just one enough. Just a, just a subtle layer here. Something maybe just a little, just a little, one or two steps more than, a little more distinct than what I had before. Because I did remember drag in some sun rays, but they, you know, sometimes they don't show up as much. They dry out. That's the great part about acrylics when you're doing stuff like this. They kind of, they tend to dry subtle, so it's hard to overdo. As long as you're careful. I mean, obviously, if you leave, leave hard edges or anything weird, well, you know, that's not going to dry out. But a lot of the stuff will dry and just kind of fade away as it dries. You'll be very happy with the result. But isn't that pretty? Look at that. The way these little shafts of light kind of are coming through the forest. Oh, I like that. Very subtle. Very, very, very subtle. Look at that. <laughs> That's good stuff. Well, that about wraps up this painting. You can really see how the mist ties everything together and makes it a lot more interesting. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and brush line. Thanks for watching. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe if you're not already and click the like button, that helps me out a lot. Stick around, watch a couple more videos and stay inspired. Mm -hmm.